YouTube, what's up, man? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. As a matter of fact, welcome back to another sit down video in the office. If y'all may have noticed, things have kind of changed and shifted in the background. Wifey has kicked me out of the office. She's actually doing a, a whole reno in there, a, a revamp. So we are in the studio space, the, the future studio that I'm building in here. But anyhow, welcome back to the channel. I am doing a breakdown video for you guys. It's been a minute since I did one of these videos because of course I don't usually talk about numbers a lot again on this channel just because of the the misconception that a lot of people get when they see numbers. So about six months ago, I did a breakdown video talking about what it was looking like and how bad it was out here on the road. Today, I'm doing a breakdown video and this video is gonna show you a good week in today's market of hotshot trucking. So I'm gonna go over the gross versus the net. We're gonna see all of the rates, the miles, the deadhead, where I've been and things like that, man. So I'm just bringing back another video like that for you guys. I'm gonna share my screen with you guys as I usually do and we're gonna be able to see everything that we did in this week as a whole and what a good week of hot shot trucking looks like right now in today's market stay tuned don't go anywhere grab some popcorn grab some water no soda grab something good yeah man we're gonna get right into it man stay tuned so if you guys seen one of my last videos where I did a update live video talking about what we're doing right now and how we're moving in the industry. You guys will see that I haven't been over the road as much as I have in the past. Only because things have shifted as far as the new trailer that we have, we have more options. The rates haven't been so great. Fuel has been high in certain areas. So we've kind of pivoted in what we do as far as you know, taking oversized loads and, and things like that of that nature. This week, I wanted to get away from doing a lot of regional work. This week was good though, man. I definitely decided to make a change and go out and see what things were looking like. We had a good run. Like I said, man, let's jump right into this video. As I'm doing a breakdown, I'll probably show y'all some pictures and, and some videos of doing these loads because I did not vlog this week. So let's get into the screen and let's talk about what this money is looking like. All right, y'all, so we are now on the computer. This week began on March 20th, 2023. So this was the third week uh, out of the month. And as y'all can see here, we did six loads in total, which a few of them were partials from Conroe to LaGrange, Kentucky. Now, starting the week here in Texas, coming out of Houston, man, as y'all can see, not a great way to start, not the best load to start with, but um, what we do is we go off of the average, man. Right now with the way things are, we're not trying to take anything less than $2 a mile. This load, unfortunately, was $1.94 a mile with deadhead. So as you can see here, man, the total was 953 miles. This did include my deadhead of 11 miles. So this was picking up from my yard to the pickup um, so we had 11 miles of deadhead. As you can see here, the rate was 1850. They would not budge, but I knew that taking this load, we'd be in, into Kentucky, we'd be getting into a better market, a better area for freight. So um, before the deadhead, it was $1.96 a mile. After the deadhead, you can see here we're at $1.94 a mile. Again, not the best way to start our week. But yeah, let's move on, man. Let's move on. Load number two, we dropped off that load on the 21st. Uh, which was uh, the Tuesday. And as I was dropping off that load, wifey did find me the next load, which was a short run. I like to, as soon as I drop off that load, um, the morning of, I like to have, I like to be ready to go, man. I don't want to have to sit. These days, yeah, you know, you got to sit a little bit more than usual just because of what the board's been looking like. But luckily we found a load from Louisville, Kentucky, which was about 28 miles from the drop going over to St. Louis, Missouri. This load was a truck, a service truck. It was a brand new uh, Chevy 5500 with, a, I believe, a crane and some toolboxes. You guys will see it here in the video. And we took that over from Louisville, Tech, Kentucky to St. Louis, Missouri. So it was a total of 302 miles, including the deadhead of 28 miles. This load was paying 750. Um, not too, too bad of a rate. Uh, before Deadhead, it was paying 273 a mile. After the Deadhead, it was paying 248 a mile. 
Again, guys, these aren't the greatest, but in today's market, this isn't bad. Real quick, I would say, man, and this is gonna all determine on what your operating costs are. So um, this might be excellent for some, and this might not be so great for some because everyone's operating costs and operations are gonna be you know, different, expenses are different. I've said this a ton of times in you know videos in the past. All right. After that truck was dropped off, now this is where things get a little good. This is why I like the Midwest. We then headed from St. Louis, Missouri to Quincy, Illinois. Uh, as you can see here, the deadhead was uh, 135 miles. This is our third load for the week. And this was a load from Quincy, Illinois to Round Top, Texas. So uh, when I saw this load, I was like, all right, cool. We going back home. Quincy, Illinois to Round Top, Texas. Total mileage was 1,029 with a deadhead of 135 miles. This load was paying 3,300. Now, the funny thing about this load is I saw it on the board the night before. I tried to call it, try to hit him up, no answer. I believe it said it was for a hot shot, but it just didn't have any rate. It didn't have a mileage. It didn't have anything. I took a snapshot. I said, you know, I'm gonna call this load in the morning. Sure enough, the load was still on the board. I don't know why this load was still here. This load, when I called it, it was paying 3,300, okay, on 894 miles when you subtract the deadhead. I could have asked for more, man. I should have asked for more like we always do. We always ask for more on every load. This time, I just was, I don't know, I just wasn't trying to chance it. I was trying to grab it and go. So it was paying 3,300, 369 a mile. After deadhead, it was paying 320 a mile. When I got to this pickup, I realized this was actually a telehandler. It was only about maybe between 12 and 15 feet. Once I realized that, I told the wife that, hey, I got this amount of space. We can possibly fit something else with it going down to Texas. And that's gonna bring us into our next load, which was a vehicle that I picked up. In route going down to Texas, we stopped in Springfield, Missouri, and that's where I spent the night. The next day, she found a load going down to Houston, Texas. It was paying $570, picking up in Springfield and going down to Houston. It's not the best rate, but as y'all know how vehicles are, man, they're paying anywhere from 50 cents all the way up to $1.50, depending on the type of vehicle. This is not something I usually like to do with taking 70 cents. However, we were adding this to what we already had, which was the 3,300. Now, if you notice here, you see the mileage that says, it says 642 miles. This is the mileage from pickup to the drop. However, this entire amount of 642 is not really accounted for because it went along with this trip going down to Round Top, Texas, since we were already going down, you know, dump going down there. This was the rate. However, it's a little bit more because we were already en route, like I said, going down to Texas. So, yeah, we had some mileage from round top going to Houston because we still had that partial. It only bumped up the rate per mile for what we already had on the trailer and everything was en route. Before I continue um, you know, on this section and going on to our next load, I'm gonna drop a clip here that I did after I dropped off the telehandler. I just wanna share some information with you guys. I had a conversation and talking to someone about detention pay, layovers. So I'm gonna share this with you guys just so for the ones that aren't aware, you guys can become more familiar with how to deal with brokers when you're waiting for a load or things get delayed or canceled and things like that. So we'll be right back for the next load. Stay tuned. Just wanna get with you guys and let you guys know what you guys need to be asking for and looking out for when you guys are out here hot shot trucking or just trucking period. So number one, man, when you guys are out here dealing with brokers and you're gonna go pick up a load or drop off a load at a shipper or a receiver, you guys wanna keep in mind that your time is valuable, man. So if you guys are out there, you gotta think about detention. So if you're out there more than two hours waiting, sitting to get loaded or unloaded, Make sure you're letting the broker know you're gonna need detention pay, $50 an hour, at least that's what we start at. With that being said, make sure you don't move until you get a new rate con showing that detention pay. Number two, if you guys get out here and you get to a shipper and the load has been canceled or it's not correct, it's not what you guys agreed to on the rate con, make sure you're getting Tonu, truck order not used. That could be anywhere from $150 all the way up to $400, $600, Documenting your in and out times on the BOLs, 
highly important. Let's say you get to a pickup, say you get there at 3 p.m. and you end up having to do a layover. Make sure they're paying you for that layover, whether it's for a night, whether it's for a weekend, whatever the case is, let them know what you're worth. Y'all get this money, man. Stop letting these brokers take advantage of us and, and just spread the word, man, because a lot of people are out here doing these things and not knowing that, hey, you can get a couple hundred extra dollars. So stay informed, stay connected and know your worth, y'all. All right, y'all, I hope y'all got some knowledge from that, man. And in case a lot of you guys may have not known how to deal with brokers and how to request certain things, I do know that some people have different amounts that they request for detention. Drop it down in the comments, man. I wanna hear what you guys have to say. What are you guys asking for, for your detention, your layover, your tow news, your truck order not used? Drop it down in the comments so that we can share more knowledge on that and stop being taken advantage of from these brokers. But let's move on, man. We're going down to Alvin, Texas, to Ulysses, Texas. This was a partial. So after we dropped off that vehicle in Houston, we went from Houston to Alvin. So Houston to Alvin was about 14 miles. So we had a total of 307 miles, including that 14 mile deadhead going to Euless, Texas. Now this was a Chevy Silverado, a 2,500 I believe. You guys will see the picture here or the video. Now this was paying $400 on uh, 307 miles, including the deadhead. We picked this up on the 24th of March, paying a total of $1.36 a mile before deadhead and $1.30 a mile after deadhead. Now when I got this vehicle, we snagged it knowing that we would be putting something else with it going up to, uh, to the Dallas area. So after we picked up that load, the wife found a nice gem of a load going up to Dallas to pair perfectly with this load for 233 miles. And again, I did the same thing here, man. We were, these both loads are going in the same direction. So that 233 miles is not fully calculated or fully added to this uh, amount to give you 500 and change. It's the difference of what the 307 miles is versus the 233 miles. This was paying a total of 775 on 233 miles on the 24th uh, with a total of $3.32 a mile. Okay, so again, we were just adding this to this original pickup because this one came first. We did have to tarp this load. It was a some type of chiller or cooler of some sort going to a, uh, a food company. Small partial, it was about maybe seven feet wide, maybe 10 feet to 12 feet of deck space. So it fit per perfectly in front of that vehicle. All right, y'all, so as you can see it here, man, the total gross for this week was $7,645. You can see our total mileage here was 2,883. And our average rate per mile was $2.65. Yes, some of these, like for instance, this first load we did was $1.94, not typically what we do, but we had to get out. We had to secure something to get out of Houston. The market is just pretty much saturated with high shots down here, man. So. It is what it is. So let's move right into the fixed deductions. These are gonna be the amounts that come out no matter what happens, whether we're running or we're not. We're gonna start off with storage. Storage, we pay $25 a week. After that, we pay our commercial insurance, which is 372. That's gonna be for our liability, cargo, and our bobtail insurance, our physical damage. Our truck payment is $347.75. Our cell phone phone is $15.75. Truck maintenance, I'm still doing $200 a week, which is working for me. Our ELD is $8 a month. I do not do an escrow. Uh, this is what I was doing when I was leased on. But usually the escrow is something that a carrier or a company will take out from a lease on or a driver to put away in case they were to leave the company and they had some outstanding claims or whatever money they owed that company for whatever reason, whether it's, you know, ELDs or whatever it was. That's, where the, that's what that escrow is for. So the total fixed deductions are gonna be $968 for this week. And then we go down to our weekly variables. So these are things that are gonna change, you know, by the week. As y'all can see here, in this case, we didn't do any showers or any laundries. I use a RTS fuel card for my fuel guys. So I'm always able to save at Pilot and Flying J plus get points for my showers when I use uh, those truck stops. Now, if I were to fill up at a Circle K, which sometimes it might be cheaper than these major truck stops, then of course I won't have points. So I usually go like a day or two without a shower if I have to. And then, um, you know, after that, then we gotta, we gotta get cleaned up. We'll wipe down or whatever we gotta do. Truck washes, we didn't spend on any truck washes. Um, I paid parking for uh, one night, man, $18.02, crazy. 
I reserved the parking because I got to a truck stop. I forgot where it was, but there was just no parking at all. All right, I did do any oversized loads, so no permits, but I did print, as I put here, print BOL. That was $2 for that print, crazy. Paying that much just to print a piece of paper, but it is where it is. Uh, fuel, we spent $2,013.38 on fuel. I don't think that was too bad for that week based on what we did and the miles that we ran. I think we averaged around maybe 395 or 390 a gallon for fuel supplies which is deaf this is what we did uh $28 and 44 cents I think that was three bottles of deaf uh that I get from Walmart I do not use deaf from the pump y'all that's just what I've been doing on this truck on my previous truck I did skip one hotels we didn't spend anything on hotels because like I said we were back home even though we went up to Dallas with those last two partials we went up to Dallas intentionally because we had a project that we were doing and we did stay in a hotel but that was actually covered by with the gig and the things that we were doing so it didn't come out of our pocket if not it would have been on here lastly uh dispatching you know we put 10 percent aside from the company to the dispatching company which is what my wife runs that was 10 percent seven seven hundred and sixty four dollars and sixty cents is what dispatching would have cost us that week what did cost us that week it cost the company and the total for the weekly variables, as you can see here, is $2,826.56. All right, so when we take $7,645 and we subtract $968 and $2,826.56, we get a total of $3,850.44, y'all. Not too bad for the company, the gross, or to net for the week. However, keep in mind also that there are other expenses that may come out of here where, we, you know, when we talk about taxes, and you know paying a driver which is me and things like that but as a whole you know the company didn't do bad netting three thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars and forty four cents not a bad week i would call this a great week in today's market as y'all know things have shifted drastically in the market rates have gone down fuel prices are still up freight alone is is scarce right now there's so many drivers there's so many carriers so many owner operators and hot shots right now in the market that is causing the the number of trucks versus freight to to be off that's just a part of what it is but what we do is man we're, we're patient we're not moving for anything less than two two dollars a mile our number usually typically is 230 a mile but coming out of houston man we kind of have to we have to move for what we did just to get out here to get to a better market now, are we taking a rate like that going to west texas to florida to, to Colorado, to certain areas, no, that, 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 just, that just won't make sense at all. So you gotta keep in mind where you put your truck when you're moving for what you're moving. All right, y'all, so that's gonna wrap up this video, man. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys uh, were grateful with this video because like I said, I don't talk a lot of numbers anymore just because people take it and see it for what it is, not understanding what goes into it, you know, the details, gross versus net, expenses, operating costs, and the list goes on, man. So like I said, I just wanted to do this. I'll probably do these videos every now and then just to kind of show you guys what things are looking like for us as a company, how things are in today's market. Drop some comments down below. Let us know what you guys are moving for. If you guys are up to it, drop down your lowest RPMs, whether you're CDL or non-CDL. And let's try to, you know, not move for nothing too crazy, y'all or at least make an attempt to. With that being said, guys, that's gonna wrap this video. If you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. As you guys can see, we recently hit 50,000, men. Thank you to everyone out there that is subscribed to the channel, that tunes in and um, just shows your support, man. It's really appreciated overall. Like, I can't thank you guys enough. I hope that the channel and the content that I put out continues to help you guys out there in any way, shape, or form. Again, like the video, subscribe, share the video, and yeah, man, I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. Peace out, y'all. Later.